Hello viewers, welcome back to another episode and uh, in this episode I want to talk about um, of the integration of the alpha servers in my former VEX cluster which is now a VMS cluster. Um, I've did all that stuff off camera because uh, I think one and a half weeks ago my ex follower knew more there because I've posted some pictures on X about that topic. I think I posted them also on the community tab. Um, but I did this all, uh, all off camera because yeah, I just want to make progress and want to see progress and uh, filming all that stuff. Yeah, uh, takes a lot of time, therefore I uh, uh, did not film it. I only made a screen capture of the OpenVMS installation on Alpha, um, but um, it's not a big difference to the installation on an Itanium system. And there's a video here on YouTube, I will link that down below, where you can see the installation on Itanium. Therefore, yeah, I do not plan to show the whole installation progress on the Alpha servers. Yeah, and you can see here both Alpha servers. Um, they are called XP1, XP2 now. I'm not very creative what, in case of names for my uh, servers. And they are now integrated into the cluster. We'll turn it on later. Um, but um, uh, the, uh, still, they're still not connected to the rack. They are, they are just laying in the rack, but there's no rack mounting kit at the moment. I've ordered a rack mounting kit, a different one, but it does not fit. So uh, I now order another one. Maybe that will fit. But at the moment, yeah, you cannot, when you want to uh, access the lower server, you have to. Uh, take out the upper one first and disconnect everything. But so, yeah, maybe I hope that that problem will be uh, yeah, solved later. And I've installed that OpenVMS version here. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, this one, OpenVMS for Alpha version 7.3-1 from January 2004. I have the original box and in the box are all that stuff. Open it, uh, the Ds and manuals, so it's original. Open VMS from HP. Yeah, not from digital because it's a newer version. Yeah, and on top there is a bit, a bit different on the, uh, the network because I've, there was another pitch first, this one here. This was connected first to the backplane, but uh, I have to uh, change it because the uh, this multi-switch FE switch 948TXG uh, did some strange things. So I was able to uh, uh, solve DNS, but um, I cannot open any website because I think there is some kind of package filtering active on that switch, even after a full factory with that. So uh, yeah, I don't know if there's some kind of security feature which uh, allows, did not allow uh, any access through that module. And because I cannot configure it because my uh, the vision version is way too old. Yeah, I have removed it and I've uh, inserted that VN switch on it X double X. This is a complete uh, fiber switch um, and it's connected to the back to things you will see later because I have to convert a lot of uh, fiber to copper. Uh, and this switch is working, but uh, there's this also not a connection to the backplane, so there is not able to communicate that mod this module with that module where the VEX are connected um, together or via the backplane because uh, this module can only access uh, uh, VN switch lanes and not the normal Ethernet lane here on the backplane. And therefore I have uh, to, uh, uh, to use one of the, uh, there's, a, there's a small eight port switch in the back just for the communication that I need to put another a copper cable in here, and uh, yeah, uh, um, because I do not have not another, uh, I do not uh, have enough hundred megabit ports there. Put also these hub in, in these in the back plane, so I have eleven more uh, hundred mbit ports because I want to go as fast as possible. Yeah, that is the front, and now I will switch to the back. Okay, let's have a look at the back of the cabinet and uh, yeah. The Cabinet is uh, uh, quite near positioned to the wall, so I think it's about it's, uh, one feet or 30 centimeter of space. So I will open the door completely, only a bit. And uh, yeah, this is the back of the cabinet. And uh, here are uh, some media converters because uh, yeah, I have too much fiber equipment and too less copper equipment. And uh, when I want to go a bit faster, yeah, I need to convert a lot of uh, uh, fiber and copper and vice versa. That's the reason why there are media converters. And down here are the alpha servers. And um, I've put SCSI controller in each alpha controller. And there are two different ones. Uh, one is 
uh, um, uh, HVD SCSI controller, um, and it looks a bit different to the single inlet uh, Alpha controller because yeah, there is a small chip for the higher voltage differential, and this needs an extra chip. And uh, the single inlet um, controller, there is um, chips for auto termination, and you have to terminate the um, HVD controller uh, with um, resistor networks. Um, and uh, because the and here you can see it here, uh, there are external um, external termination and therefore uh, I have removed the uh, internal resistors from the controller because here is such uh, as a uh, Y cable on each controller so there and there are the HVD SCSI controllers and the lower one has uh, also a single ended SCSI controller when I want to connect uh, some uh, tape drive or something like that and here the green cables are the network cables so the uh, cluster is uh, connected over Ethernet to the VEX at the moment there's no DSI connection because I do not have any DSSI controllers for the Alpha source at the moment I am still looking for DSSI controllers um, uh, for that uh, machines but uh, I did not find one on the internet at the moment especially for a reasonable price um, um, yeah, and the um, lower server, there's no um, available PCI slot, so I need for the lower server an um, AISER DSSI controller. The upper server has a free uh, PCI slot, so I couldn't put a um, uh, DSSI PCI controller in there, but not on the lower server, so at the moment I uh, uh, can only use the uh, Ethernet connection. But yeah, uh, DSSI connection would be quite nice because then I can uh, share storage via DSSI and I don't have the uh, MCSP server. Um, and yeah, this is, would be quite nicer, but it also works over. Ethernet, yeah, and then there's also the power connector, and uh, later on I will connect the terminal uh, when I will start all that stuff. Yeah, and now I will connect the, uh, this terminal cable, and then let's start all the hardware. Okay, now everything is running. I've started all the machines and the network, and uh, both SSRs are running. You can see the green running light is on of the server on the bottom, and uh, both servers are connected here to the HS370. Um, they have a common system drive, so they booted um, both from these two hard drives. Uh, one from the the zero folder and one from the this one folder, so there's only one system drive for both machines. And as you can see here, uh, this is a cluster. Uh, there are 
the XP1 and 2, the Alpha machines, and DBS1 and 3. They're both Rexus, and uh, it's running on VMS 7.3-2, and uh, the VEX are running on VMS version 6.1. Officially, this is not supported, so when you look in the manual for um, VMS version 7, it said you have to use at least um, VMS uh, version 6.2 with a special kit, but uh, it's also this unofficial configuration is possible. Uh, I have entered the uh, cluster ID and the, uh, the cluster group ID and the cluster password. Uh, I have to change. I had to change both on, on the Rex because uh, I didn't know the original cluster group ID and the original cluster password. But we can change it with Sysman. It's quite easy. Um, and um, after that, uh, the system is in the the back. The alphas are able to access the cluster. Um, I did not. Uh, uh, make any further configuration at the moment, so um, I um, did not um, change the votes. So the votes are still the old votes, and there's also um, the cluster for the forum. Uh, it's quite, it's causes a bit odd behavior when I shut down the systems, but um, uh, I have to make the configuration soon. But uh, I will remove the forum disk after I will add the third wax, and uh, then I will uh, change also uh, all of the votes. And um, uh, first, I want to print uh, a lot of configuration files from the VEX machines because uh, there are a lot of individual configuration files in side logs, side logical configuration, and startup and startup uh, configuration. And uh, yeah, I'm, at the moment, I'm restoring my uh, printer. This will be also one uh, of the next videos. I think it will be the next video. And then I will print all of these uh, configuration files from the VEX, and uh, then I can make several changes here on the alpha. Uh, another thing I, uh, which is quite interesting at the moment, uh, first these ca this cable, this blue cable here, this is the cable which goes to the DECAP 90 uh, on the other side of the room where a DEC server uh, 90L plus is inserted and when this cable is connected to that module here, to the port switch 900FP, uh, LAT uh, won't work. So uh, uh, maybe the connection is too bad, but both models are in the same uh, collision domain, so it's also just a repeater and there's no, no switching or something like that. It's only the deck plane is between these two modules and I uh, do not really understand why uh, LIT uh, won't work. So the, the, the connection seems to be too uh, too bad uh, with, with that module, but this is a thing I have to uh, investigate uh, 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 soon, but at the moment yeah, this is working when I connect it to that module. Yeah, and uh, this is also the end of that video uh, where I uh, showed you this, this small overview about the current uh, uh, development of uh, yeah, now the VMS cluster. Uh, and I hope you find that interesting and leave comments below and see you in the next video.